There is beginning to be more and more out there about sensory issues, sensory rooms, and sensory gyms. But how can they really help? Join us as we talk to an occupational therapist who helps us understand how sensory rooms and sensory gyms can really help. Welcome to My Spectrum Life. I'm Jessica, an autism mom, and with me are a bunch of my good friends, mm -hmm. uh, Kelsey, Latrice, and Matthew. Hi, guys. Hi. Hello. Uh, why don't you go ahead and tell everybody your uh, qualifications. I'm an autism mom. Kelsey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm a sled teacher. I'm Latrice. I am a licensed professional counselor supervisor now and also an autism mom. Hi, and my name is Matthew Husband, and I'm an occupational therapist. All right, so let's talk sensory gyms and mm -hmm. sensory rooms and sensory things. Um, <laughs> when I first got the um, diagnosis of sensory processing disorder for Curtis, they told me I needed to find, it was very important for me to find him a place that had a sensory gym. Why are those so important for OTs? Yes. So before we even get into the gyms and the spaces, um, I think one thing that has happened with sensory is mm -hmm. you get that as a buzzword, sensory. And I think there's a yeah. lot more to unpack than just being able to say sensory. Because yes. as we know with all of our kids, they experience the world so differently and individually right. than anybody else. Oh, yeah. um, and so I think sometimes... Um, parents are given this this yeah sensory like they have sensory issues but they're not really told all of the in-depth things of what are going on because obviously we have so many different sensory systems and mm -hmm. like i was saying before um our kids may be under um the feeling senses a little bit less than they should or a little bit more than they should. Mm -hmm. um, so when we're thinking about the sensory systems, we have to be very specific about what is going on in each system with that child at different times throughout the day, because it could be high or it could be low depending on the situation or whatever is going on. Mm -hmm. um, so just want to give that as the first disclaimer in you know, kind of that OT background of mm -hmm. when we're thinking about sensory systems. That makes sense. Um, I know I've read that there's up to, depending on who you talk to, there's between eight and 11 and who knows how many other sensory systems, depending on who you talk to. Yes. So obviously you have your, your classic um, sensory system. So your, your sense of smell, your sense of touch, your sense of sight, your auditory system. Um, and then the two that we really focus in on for occupational therapists is your proprioceptive system and your tactile system. So mm -hmm. proprioception is really just understanding uh, how your joints move um, mm -hmm. and and how that can change uh, throughout the day. And so for our kids that have proprioceptive issues, they have a lot of trouble discriminating how to handle different objects or be able to move throughout the day. So I like to give the example of like if they were given a plastic cup versus um, a paper cup, they may crush the paper cup by holding it because they don't understand how much force they need to right. hold that cup. Okay. And so when it changes, mm -hmm. their proprioce proprioceptive system is not giving them the appropriate feedback from their hand to their brain to say, oh, I need to hold this a little bit lighter. And so we have a lot of kids who are very forceful when they're doing things or they're very light. So they're kind of on the other spectrum. Mm -hmm. And then the tactile system is our kids who have trouble with different clothing. So anything that has to deal with touch, anything oh, yes. that can be very sensitive for them. <laughs> so, um, and then that will feed into our feeding issues on um, that tactile, the, the, the texture of food. Um, and so those are, the, those are the two that we really focus in on because those other systems are going to be, handled, we'll still talk about them, but they'll be handled mm -hmm. more by, by doctors and professionals when we're thinking mm -hmm. about our eyesight and our hearing. But um, for OTs, proprioception, so mm -hmm. how we understand how our body is moving, and then our tactile system, our, our mm -hmm. touch, are the two that we look at. Okay, where does the vestibular fit again? Uh, yep. Yeah, so then there's the vestibular system as well. So that's basically where you are in space. Um, okay. So if you think about like All if right. you're going on a car ride, how does that affect your body? Mm -hmm. So if your head is in the same space, but you're moving around a lot, um, for our kids, sometimes that can be dysregulated and therefore they're mm -hmm. not understanding how they're moving in space as well. Okay, one of the things I know that we've just uh, 
we've started to deal with is the interoception. Okay. Yeah. That's okay. I'm saying it right. Yeah. Yep. Interoception. So you're, yeah, you're getting all the systems in there. And what have you been working on with the interoception? Well, we just did a, uh, both kids just did a big questionnaire um, okay. for um, that. And uh, our OT is going to be evaluating that and figure out what she's going to do with it. But um, yeah, see, he can say all those words that we can say. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So I know we were talking since now, how does the sensory room and sensory gym help with all of those senses we just talked about? Yeah. So the, the sensory gym is, is set up to work on those different irregularities within mm -hmm. those sensory systems. Um, so we'll have, uh, different ways to challenge a child's body by having a sensory gym. So being able to move on different platforms and be on different swings, um, and feel different textures, um, that they wouldn't normally be able to do um, kind of just in, in normal life. Um, and so the way that I like to look at sensory gyms is it's a, a precursor in a way to really work on those systems within a confined space. Um, mm -hmm. But again, I love to look at the functional stuff. So what else can we incorporate within the day that can work on those systems? Right. Um, so if we think about like heavy work, so if our child is craving lots of movement and lots of just bouncing off the walls, uh, sensory gyms are great and those can mm -hmm. be very important, but I also want to do more functional things throughout the day. So helping out with carrying the laundry up and down the stairs or bringing the groceries into, uh, into the house, different things where they're actually having to do something that can be beneficial within the house and within mm -hmm. the family that doesn't put extra onus on the parents to have to set aside time to be in the sensory gym. Right. Um, so kind of a combination of both. Um, right. So that those skills can also be functional and work on kind of the same thing. Awesome. You mean we don't have to dedicate an entire room in our house? <laughs> Well, no, you can, you can definitely have that room in your house, um, but that is not, you know, it's not possible for everyone. Um, oh, so, yeah. so if we can have those more functional things incorporated, uh, it just makes mm -hmm. it easier to, to be able to tell lots of different people how to use them. That's great. I know that we had, um, I don't know if you've ever done this, Latrice, we had a, um, we, well, we did a DIY um, swing for Curtis. Um, that we had screwed up into the rafters and I just took mm -hmm. some material and looped it and he would like flip it inside out or whatever. And he would either get in, in it and play Superman and, you know, mm -hmm. go back and forth or um, try to touch. What was it? He used to, um, Kelsey, he was touching what he'd kick the, the pirate bed and then kick the wall. <laughs> depending mm -hmm. on where he sweat. Oh yeah. Um, that actually was an amazing thing for him. Um, what, why why was that such an amazing thing for why swing i mean swings seem to be one of those things that help like the big one to go to mm -hmm. yeah the, when we're talking about the vestibular system so being able to just really get that rocking back and forth oh um that you don't get just in normal activities that you can do and so that's why the swings can really benefit from that and you can change them in different positions um and you can change the speeds um and yeah that swings it just seems like for a lot of our kids that they really need that rhythmic movement and the swings provide that for them to get them in that what we call that band that optimal band um for their vestibular system that makes sense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did you have any major things that uh, you used, Latrice, for Terrence? Um, I was like, we had a swing in our backyard that Terrence mm -hmm. loved a lot, and he enjoyed the sensory gym in private therapy. They had one there. He um, liked to swing. One thing that Terrence learned from OT, he learned how to ride his bike mm -hmm. um, from OT therapy. They had like a little a mini tricycle. Um, that he would practice on and then he would come home and kind of ride his tricycle. Then he actually learned how to ride a, a, a real bike. Awesome. And so that was something that he learned from OT. That's great. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Like mm -hmm. cycling and swimming are two really good activities that can be done, you know, um, kind of in the community and swimming especially is giving all of that sensory input that and a lot of our kids just love to swim um, so if we're able to teach them how to swim because the the pressure from the water and just the resistance that they're feeling right. and um, just the feel of being in the water um, is really calming for a lot of our kids as well mm -hmm. oh, wow. one thing that I can say that Terrence liked um, he liked the sensory bands 
um, we created some at home for them. And I also have some at my job and that I've created with rice and beans and add Legos and trucks and toys in it. And that has been a huge hit. Yeah, yep. sensory, sensory bins are great. <laughs> um, yep, getting that tactile um, mm -hmm. input for them to be able to touch different things and then try to pair it with some sort of academic skill. So they're trying to find the same color or the same shape of something that's hidden within a rice bin or something else. Um, so those are always always a really big hit with our kids as well. Mm -hmm. The big one in a classroom that's really easy to do, especially the ones who like to move, are, I forget what kind of bands they are, but you can stretch them across the end of their two desk seats and mm -hmm. they can put their feet in and sit there and kick, mm -hmm. and just, which mm -hmm. just really helps some of their focus, some of their, like, even sequencing just by adding that little kick. Um, even small, as simple as adding a Velcro on a desk, because um, mm -hmm. we try to keep it minimal as much as possible because, you know, we're overcrowded in the school systems mm -hmm. um, and minimum just putting like Velcro so they can sit there, mm -hmm. just kind of get them to refocus. Cause since I know, correct me if I'm wrong, Matthew, cause sometimes it's to, yes, to help them with their body awareness and all these symptoms, but it's also a calming mechanism, I use it mechanism for as well. Right. For sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And if we think, if we're thinking about the classroom, for a lot of our uh, for a lot of our kiddos, just being able to pay attention and be in one space right. for a very long period of long time, time is super hard. And so mm -hmm. if there's ways that we can modify the desk, like you're saying, or have some sort of fidget that they can hold under the desk or Velcro that they can mess with, but still be able to pay attention to whatever right. the lesson is. Now, the hard right. part of my job is figuring out, okay, these things that we're incorporating, how are they not distracting not only for that <laughs> child, but everybody else in the room? So you have to be you got to be very sneaky about how you're incorporating it because sometimes it can be your worst enemy because then they're just fidgeting all the time and then <laughs> the person next to them wants to play with it and then it just, yeah, becomes even yep, worse. Yeah. Not because of behavior issues. Yeah. <laughs> right. yeah. One thing I recommend like in therapy, I talk about sensory is emotional regulation for calming, but I also recommend for schools to maybe, maybe use a timer, a quiet timer or something where the kid can have what they call a brain break to help them calm and yep. refocus. And maybe they can go to a station like where the sensory bin may be, something like that. Then you can rotate that throughout your classroom. So it's not, it's not a big distractor, but right. something that maybe can benefit not just that particular student, but maybe your whole class. Yes, and we're always taking advantage of visuals, um, like you're yeah. saying. That timer is a tangible visual for our kids to see, okay, I know that once this reaches zero, then this is the ending point. And so when we think mm -hmm. about our three systems for our kids, I think that's one thing that can be overlooked is that their visual system is much stronger than their auditory system. So if right. you're able to yeah. show them a picture of something versus explain it to them with words, the picture is going to be stronger than the words because they mm -hmm. utilize their visual system more than their mm -hmm. auditory system. So yeah, timers are wonderful because it gives them that that start point and that end point and they can know because they're very concrete mm -hmm. in their thinking. And if you mm -hmm. leave it open to interpretation, that's when we're <laughs> going to get those behaviors. Cause like, I'm, I thought I was done with this, but no, you're making me still do it. Oh my goodness. Yes. <laughs> oh yes, yes, yes. Well, we've, we've gotten a lot of good information. I hope if, if, even if you're a teacher, an autism parent, um, anybody, this has been some amazing information. Um, Leave us a comment below about something that you may use or an, even another question that you have. You can email us at info at myspectrumlife.com. You can also Are find you? us at the internet at uh, Facebook and Instagram at myspectrumlife and Twitter at myspectrumlife with number one. And Latrice, where else can you find us? On our YouTube page, you can subscribe to any of our new videos. Just hit the subscribe button and there you have it. Isn't our graphic cool? We love our behind the scenes <laughs> guy too. <laughs> yep. so cool. Alrighty. Well, remember everybody with a lot of faith, love, and yes, occupational therapist approved fidget toys. You can make it. <laughs> Bye.